There's a shadow hanging over us There's a light that guides us home We give until there's nothing left Cause we're the flesh and you're the bone And home is where the heart is That's where it all started Though some may depart I'm sure they must be broken hearted Port Talbot in South Wales is a town that makes steel and chemicals and that most outsiders drive past at speed. It's not a place often associated with theatre. Hey! I'm just wondering if it's a way to bring everyone a bit closer. But... but in six months' time, next Easter, a local man has a plan for the town to stage the most ambitious theatrical project that Wales has ever seen. His name is Michael Sheen. Born and raised in Port Albert, Michael, of course, is a well-known movie actor, famous for his portrayal of characters like Tony Blair, David Frost and Brian Clough, and who is now one of the hot names in Hollywood. Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to think of it a little bit more informal. I don't really want to be standing on the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please come a little bit closer to the stage? But Michael's next role, working with the new National Theatre of Wales, may well be his most ambitious to date. One of the big defining things about this town is that it is bypassed. <laughs> there are roads <laughs> that are there to ensure that nobody has to deal with our town. Uh, Sheen's plan you know, is to both direct and star in his own updated three-day version of the crucifixion story. And he's hoping to persuade the whole town to take part. The story is, I suppose, inspired by the story of the Passion of Christ. And I got very excited about the idea of being able to tell that story in our town through our community. Community is not something that we can take for granted. It's not something that's just there. You know, it's something that we have to work for and earn and passionately defend. Yeah, I think it's great. I think it's great that he's coming back to the Talbot, uh, being a Talbot boy himself. Um, there's not a lot going on at the moment in the community, uh, especially in the arts uh, aspect. And it's great that he's coming back and he's choosing to do something in the town. It's, it's going to be immense, really, isn't it? An organisational nightmare, though. <laughs> there is a long tradition of community passion plays, townsfolk acting out the story of the crucifixion of Jesus. And if you're thinking of putting on a passion play, there's one place you have to visit. The world's most famous passion play takes place every ten years in the Bavarian town of Oberammergau. Michael has come here to do some research, along with his creative partners, Co-director Bill Mitchell, who runs a company called Wildworks, which specialises in large-scale community theatre, and the poet and writer Owen Shears. It started as a bargain with God, so as to be saved from the plague. It seems to have worked. They haven't had anyone die of plague since 1634. So every 10 years they, they do it, and it started off in the cemetery, and now it's moved to a huge purpose-built kind of aircraft hangar um, of a theatre. Um, and the extraordinary thing is, I remember 30 years ago, my grandmother coming here to Oberammergau to watch the play part of a church group, um, and to think that I'm here 30 years later, and they've only done it twice in between <laughs> since then, is extraordinary. After the show, Michael and Owen went backstage to meet Jesus, the actor Frederick Myatt. Oh yeah, from a technical point how of view. Were you, how how do you, you stay, stay on it? How do you stay? No, it's easy. Um, the nails was out there. It is. Oh, it is under, 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 under
Right, right, right. And, and then it continues on. Yeah. And do you have a little thing that you've Yeah, because right. yeah, it, it looked very realistic. Mm. On the arms? Right. So your hand, your wrist rests yeah. on that, I see. Plates. That's for the feet. And we need to work out how oh, yeah. I can stay up there and it not has fall to off. Be safe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's the most important. I get. I wake up in the middle of the night sometimes, going, <laughs> <laughs> thinking about how, how I'm going to be up there. I really was concerned, and still am concerned, about the idea of it being seen as me coming back to my town, and I see myself as Jesus or some kind of you know special person, and. You know, and that I'm there to teach people or something, which is kind of nonsense. And so, if anything, more and more, I've started to see the Jesus figure as being like a conduit, like a vessel, and that he do he doesn't come to tell anyone anything; he comes to listen. Heading back to Port Albert from Oberammergau, Michael, like the character he is going to play, is embarking on a huge exercise to listen to the people and the stories of the town. His rather ambitious plan is to try and improvise a new script for the Passion from scratch, using the lives and memories of local people as raw material. Adele Thomas has been given the job of finding and recording these stories, and she has set up a stall in the shopping center. That's amazing. Dead so cool. brilliant. Today, we've been um, collecting people's films and their photographs, um, their memories of the town, and those things are going to somehow filter their way into the show. Um, someone came in earlier on and they handed us a stack of cine films which have been rushed off to the lab to be converted into DVDs so we can play them in the show. Um, people have been bringing us old photographs, they've been bringing us um, cards and books and VHS tapes, and, or just coming in to tell us stories about the past of the town. These little luggage tags um, each represent a separate memory of something in the town that's been lost, something that doesn't exist anymore. At the moment, the plan is that when uh, Michael's teacher character is crucified at the end of the show, he will regain his memory and suddenly all of the lost things of the town will come flooding back um, and he'll kind of deliver a litany of everything that's been lost. Um, and then eventually those things will somehow appear from under the ground and they'll kind of be brought back to the town. Don't know how yet, but that's the plan at the moment. Port Albert's intensively industrial history and the impact of recession, unemployment and pollution have over the years made this a tough town to live in. One of the most devastating episodes in the history of Port Albert was the building of the giant M4 overpass right through the centre of the town. Llewellyn Street was one of the roads in the path of the motorway and one side of the road was completely demolished. Tonight, Michael is hosting a party for the residents of Llewellyn Street. Any stories you've got about the street, past, present, all the things you remember that you miss about the, the town as a whole or the street specifically. Um, and, uh, and we'd love to be able to interview anyone who's interested in being interviewed. We'd love it. The well, I was born there for a start and um, I lived there till I was about 15 until the houses um, were due to come down. But after, after this moving, our houses were still up for about a 12 month. And I kept going up every day to my house, climbing into the back window, sitting down, having my little thoughts and my regrets that the houses were coming down, till they finally did come down, and um, it is a very sad day. John Sparks is another Llewellyn Street resident who has strong memories of the demolition. When they pulled down the houses themselves, our homes were ruined. The noise was bedlam from morning to night. The main thing that we lost was, was neighbours. Once that side of the street was, was gone, the community had broken because people were belonging to each other. Not only did they pull one side of the street down, they also pulled my chapel down where we got married in 19... 
and we were the last people to get married there. Uh, also, they pulled my school down for the building of the motorway. I'm really excited and looking forward to the project. And uh, I'm sure Port Albert will have never seen anything like it, and neither will Wales, I don't think. It's a pleasure, nice to see you. Have a good day. Bye bye. bye. It's a grey day in February, three months before Easter, you know, and Michael is taking the team on a tour of the streets of Port Albert to try to work out how on earth they will become the settings for the passion story. Well, the important thing with this whole project really is that it's outdoors, and that's what, you know, is one of the major factors. I'll go and say hello. Hello. I was going to say, yes, I could, is it Monday we're coming in? Great, OK. It only really kicks in what it's going to entail once you're out and you, you know, we can go to the different locations and we can look at where it's actually going to take place. This is the area where we'd be potentially having the sort of refugee camp. Being Michael Sheen, it's hard to go anywhere in the town without meeting one or two friends. Hello, you all right? Hey, uh, you all right? We could have people potentially standing on the stones on that little island over there or in the river or on the... And if not, if it's too much, then on the bridge or something connected to the river yeah. as we're singing about the people of the river and all that. The middle of the shopping centre is a perfect performance space and Michael already has plans to use it for some of the key scenes. This is the space where I meet my mother and then in the procession, if I have collapsed outside at this yeah. point, then somehow it's being brought back to the mother yeah, yeah. here. So this is the climax of the three-day drama will be a great procession with the cross, through the town and then down to the seafront. It could almost be like an intake of breath at this point, like yeah. the drumming, everything stops and in yeah. silence we move around and then we, and then we see the place of the cross at the end of it. I mean, let's have a look at what we can see. Yeah. But if there is a kind of a, a moment where we... <gasps> Where it changes. It's the last it stretch. Here, isn't it? Yeah. Hello, you all right? All right, right. Say hello to him for me. Ta -da. Hello, hello. You all right? Nice to see you. And you? Yeah, this is, seems like a good place, a sort of a gathering of strength for the last stretch. There's a big moment here where yeah. am I going to be able to pick it up? Am I going to be able to do it? Maybe at this. Maybe at this first roundabout here, there's a roundabout here, isn't there? Maybe this is a point which I collapse. The hike ends up on a windy roundabout near the seafront, which Michael has decided is the perfect spot on which to be crucified. However, <laughs> how high is it going to be? Um, it's about <laughs> three metres. <laughs> yeah, we're not going forward. <laughs> the reality hits you hard when you're here, especially how cold it is at the moment. <laughs> I'm thinking, this is where I'll be on the cross. Um, but we'll see what happens. Rehearsals are taking place all over Potoba, but based at the Naval Social Club. So it's the centre of the mayhem um, with daily warm-ups on the beach, which I've managed to avoid. OK, give yourselves a bit of a slap. Well, I'm age back then. I don't know, to be honest. I, I just... I really don't know. On your face, then your arms. In the Naval Social Club, there's about four different rooms where people are rehearsing, ranging from the professional actors on the show through to community members. There's also things being built. I was just hanging out the back with Sue, who's polishing a large piece of wood that's going to be turned into a very unconventional puppet stage. Uh, there's people wandering around looking for their choir rehearsal. <laughs> There's a bloke just pulled up in a van asking if he could move everything away for scrap, which we had to let him know it was actually the set of the play. I came with a wide open mind today. I didn't know if it was going to be a passion as based on the past. Which isn't now. Which it isn't now, I see, but it still sounds really interesting to me. And I like the idea of improvisation. I like the idea of working in groups and 
and uh, there's a big production meeting going on at the same time at the moment with uh, about 30 people trying to work out how the hell we pull this off. Up the valley from Port Albert, Michael and Bill have discovered a circus school that works with kids, especially kids from difficult backgrounds, with incredible results. They're clearly going to be great for the play, but exactly what they're going to be used for isn't immediately apparent. We are completely in the dark. I just know we're taking part. I have no idea what we're doing, what's expected of us. Michael's got strong ideas about what he wants, but it's fair to say there's no fixed set of plans. Yes, For him and his team, it's more a case of devising the play as they go, using whatever resources they can get their hands on. For most of these men, their main theatrical experience comes from their annual rugby club panto. I wasn't sure what to expect, really. I did a little bit of drama in school, but apart from the panto, I haven't had anything else like a sense. In the play, these men are all going to be part of a sinister security force. Lads, lads. So the two things that were most frightening and intimidating about the Roman army were their unity, their togetherness, and their confidence. And their confidence came from knowing that they had the best technology at the time. And their unity it came through in just total togetherness. And that's what's scary, because one thing done well will be far more frightening than lots of things done kind of well. Do you know what I mean? Set! 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 Very good. Relax. Very good. We are yeah. deaf. We are deaf, isn't we? No, we are deaf. We are deaf. <laughs> I just want five volunteers at the moment just to hold. As part of the training for their roles, everyone needs to learn how to handle a gun. It changed you with feeling in the room, like. Yeah. You know, it, it, was, it was all friendly, and then yeah. the guns come out, and it was like, ooh, deathly silence. Yeah. <laughs> I think they're always held down. Yeah. Yeah. I think when, when, and then when you're sort of doing perimeters and all that, it's, it's held there. down. And then when there's an actual danger, I think then maybe it comes up. But I think on the whole, it tends to be. I ended yeah. up on crying much when I held the gun last. So. Uh... <laughs> 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 Some guns suit some people and not others. It's very... And it make you feel, Steve? Um, I didn't feel as friendly that time. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, uh... They've built most things here at the Port Albert Community Woodwork Training Project, but this is their first go at a fully functioning crucifix. The idea we've had is to use maybe six inch coach screws at uh, an appropriate distance so uh, the machine can, can support itself. And also we're uh, designing a little seat so he can, uh, he can s just sit and be comfortable while he is on the cross. You know, when he's standing up against it, it's going to be in between his legs. Yeah, the, the idea we had was something like a bicycle seat, you know? Just uh, the front part of a bicycle seat so he can just yeah. uh, sit, sit on it. We'll have a, a platform underneath um, his two feet as well, so it should come out about six inches. <laughs> I think what we're trying to do is make, make it as comfortable a crucifixion for Mr. Sheen as possible. I want to do that. I don't really need this, right? But, uh... <laughs> you see the pencil work, is it? It's not uncomfortable, It's not uncomfortable, but... It's all right when it's laying down, but when it's upright, I think it'd be slightly different. 
the key thing in the whole piece has, has sort of developed into being about um, the town being able to tell its story. And I want the stories to come from, uh, you know, from a true sense of community and that the areas of the town and the people in the town, the organisations that don't usually get seen on more on the outskirts, I suppose, or, or the ones that are, are overlooked or ignored or whatever. Um, so it's those sort of stories from the kind of outer edges of the experiences of people in the town that I've been interested in. Adele and Karis Shannon from National Theatre Wales have done a massive amount of research in the town. And Owen, the writer, is now figuring out how he's going to use that material. Obviously, you've been out there and you've been interviewing huge amounts of people and you've been setting up loads and loads of interviews. So we've built up this incredible database of stories from the town. I did sort of talk through this with Michael the other day. Mm. He said you know, that some might just simply be extracts, almost, you know, from yeah. what Cow's written. He thinks that others he might want worked up into, into slightly more lyrical pieces. If, okay. if we identify one that we think, well, that would work as a song, as a possible song. Lovely. And then others might be used actually with no words at all. It'll be some sort yeah. of a movement piece or an enactment. So um, I think the second one I did was with Emma and Nicola, who are carers for a little girl called Chloe. That's right. um, and I think that's with, through Action for Children. Mm -hmm. I think. Um, and they, I mean, they're a couple and they've chosen to care for Chloe, to give her family a break. It's very, very profoundly disabled, yeah. Yeah. physically and mentally. Um, but they have a lovely gorgeous. chemistry. And I know Michael was interested in kind of the musicality of how she likes to play. <laughs> this is Chloe, and uh, I'm Emma, and uh, I'm Nicola. And every weekend, Chloe stays with us um, through a scheme called Family Link. Family Link is an excellent scheme, really. Um, it's, you've got a uh, number of disabled children and families that need a bit of su extra support. So the family get a break, and we get the pleasure of spending time with Chloe, which is, you know, immeasurable, really. <laughs> Chloe, ready? Steady. <laughs> <laughs> Chloe's the leader, so whatever Chloe does, <laughs> if it, what she really likes is that interaction where you copy her. And she'll wait for you to do it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Before she does the next sort of either sound movement or tapping, banging. But it's all on her terms, really. And Nicola? <laughs> She's the boss. And uh, we take her lead then. And that's what she really, you know, that's what she really likes. And Nicola? We do this go around shopping everywhere we go. Tesco's, <laughs> anywhere. This is how we are, three of us banging. Are we, Chloe? The kids are running in front of us watching us. Are they, Chloe? Yeah? Yes. Michael came up for tea. I thought, you know, for about half an hour, but he ended up staying for about two and a half hours. And I don't think he would have gone then. <laughs> because he really, he got on really well with Chloe. Chloe got on really well with Michael and, um... Can we like Michael? Ready? Ready. And they, they, were, they had great communication that day. And, um, hence then, Michael went to Chloe in the passion, you know. After nearly two years of thinking, talking, researching and planning, five weeks from Easter, the full production is about to get underway. For Michael, it's a moment to reflect on the enormity of what he's got himself into. I'm full of fear and doubt at the moment, really. Um, having had this sort of intense experience over the last little while and, and, uh, and, and having a real sense of the richness of, of what is here and, you know, I've, and, I've, you know, and I've, I've got all the things that I've said I wanted this piece to be. And the town has done its part in that the town has told me what it wants the story to be and, uh, and, and I've experienced, you know, a, f a real sense of the community and it, and it has given me a feeling of, uh, of having an overview of the whole place and it's, and it's a very um, powerful one and, and troubling in some ways and hopeful and inspiring in other ways um, because the sense of the town that I've got really is is that there, there are people in real need in this town and, and very vulnerable people th through no fault of their own in difficult circumstances. And there are other people who are desperately trying to help them and do what they can for very, no reward, really. No real support there. Um, and, it's, and it really is, it feels like it's on the real front line of, of everything that the country as a whole is trying to deal with. And, um, and, and now that I've got that sense, and, I, and the whole point of this piece was to somehow 
celebrate that. Um, I feel a huge responsibility now, and uh, and, a, and a massive doubt that I uh, that I'm able to to do that. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm. It's a big challenge. Yeah. Though some may depart, I'm sure they must be broken hearted. Hey! There are no secrets in this small town. Nothing that's yours and yours alone But always up with you enough to help you out light to light to Today is the first day of full rehearsals and the whole company of designers, technicians, administrators and actors are meeting together for the first time. This is the big star. This is the bit that's massively exciting because the energy of everybody is starting to build up. It's also the bit that's really, really scary. Because, <laughs> you know, from this point on, it's real. You've really got to do it. Really what we want to do today, without getting into too much chat straight away, is to get outside. Because one of the things that I've learned over this period of time is that if I spend too long sitting in a room thinking up ideas for this, I get too used to the idea that it's just nice and comfortable sitting in a room. And then you get out to where the actual locations are and go, oh my god. How on earth are we going to do this? So it, I thought it would be great as a company that we immediately start making associations with the places that we're going to be doing it in and the kind of challenges that we'll have because of that. Michael is taking the company on a tour of all the locations, including Llewellyn Street. Um, so, in a way, this, this street becomes sort of symbolic of our, our whole story. Um, three houses have volunteered their house um, and basically what we're going to do is that I will go into the house for literally for a cup of tea with my friends and then our audience will all be out here hopefully thousands of people out here but we'll have a controlled group that just flood into the house and someone's house will just be rammed with people like that <laughs> and I'll be sitting on the sofa having a cup of tea and then a family brings their child who uh, a, a sick child uh, to be healed by him and they can't get through but the idea is that someone will get carried into the house over the heads of everyone and the family come through uh, and rather than being healed I just say tell me your story one of the main stories that will come out of Llewellyn Street is Chloe's to help with rehearsals Chloe is being taken to meet teenagers from the West Morgan Youth Theatre who are working on choreography inspired by her personality and her movements. Take a seat, come and sit over here and let's meet some people. This is Chloe. Say hello to Chloe. Hi Chloe. Hi Chloe. Two. 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 Mwah. Steady, steady. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> come on, make the popping sound. Let's see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> She's enjoying it too much. You're listening now, Chloe. You're listening to all these pops? Because we did talk a lot as well about what a responsibility this lot have got oh, yeah. as a group as well. If we're going to be trying for a second for everybody to speak like Chloe does, then we've got a huge responsibility to get it as accurate as we possibly can. Yeah. Look, should we go to the beginning bit? We've got a few people in the middle and show you a little bit of yeah, some of the please. stuff we kind of played with. Okay. Chloe's father, um, and I communicate with her through the noises we make, as you met Chloe earlier. And during this scene, we start speaking to Chloe, and from out of that comes sort of secret dances in the crowd that continue the dancing, and it evolves and grows into a massive percussion piece with bin lids and drums and um, kitchenware and cutlery and lots of things that make a lot of noise that Chloe, hopefully the real Chloe, will love.
Now that the many different elements are beginning to find a shape, Michael is working with the main actors, putting the emotional flesh on the bones of his story. His own character, who is called the teacher, has gone missing for 40 days and nights, devastating his mother and family. Worse still, he's lost his memory. Don't say that. Don't say that. No, it's me. It's your mother. I'm your mother. Port Talbot actress Di Botcher is playing the mother. With me? Yeah, I'm your mother. I'm your mother. I think the thing about having this sort of scene is you just have to hopefully go for emotional truth. And of course, there is, you know, I've, I've never had a son who's gone missing for 40 days and 40 nights. So I can't draw on that, but I can draw on what it's like to love somebody, lose somebody, fear about them, worry about them. And so I think we all can, can't we? We've all sort of left and lost, perhaps. Come on, this is cool. George, I can't leave him. Who are you, woman? Kate! I'm your mother! Kate, I'm, your, I'm your mother! Come on, my girl! The scene ends with me just sort of shouting out, who are you, woman? Yes. And going, I'm your mother. I'm yeah, mother. yes, yes. Di's next scene in the play happens later that evening, when the teacher and his new group of friends turn up for the closing night of Port Albert's Seaside Social Club for a kind of last supper. Hiya. All right. Listen, I was just wondering, perhaps we could have a, a little chat just for a minute. The rehearsal process, like so much of the development of the play, is all about storytelling. Yeah. Michael likes to talk in great detail about the characters to help bring them to life in the actors' minds. The easiest thing to jump on is mental breakdown hmm. and amnesia being a sort of uh, side. What are you hoping will happen by the end of the night? That you will recognise me, yeah, yeah. I think that you, you recognise me. And that we'll all go home together. Nice, that would be again. nice if, it, if that would happen, yes, yeah. But I sort of got the feeling of sort of just watching you, you know, looking for little signs of something. Do you remember when you were little, when you were about eight or nine, the night that I found you in the garden? Well, maybe there's something you're trying to prompt me with. You know, do you remember when that happened. I looked out the window and there you were. You were out in the garden on your own in the dark. Remember when you were a little boy and you were out in the garden and I was up in the window and I watched you for ages and then I called you and you said, oh, something, we can make something up by that, that then when we're in the garden, happens. So I opened the window and I shouted down at you, what are you doing there? When you're talking about my daughter, another point, maybe you say, do you remember this picture? Oh, I remember it was, um, I remember when, when I took it, it was, uh, you were, you were running out of, uh, or she was running out, and you picked running her up and you car, threw her up yeah. in the air. And maybe yes, it's because yes, I've, yes. I've got pictures of me and my daughter. Yes. Me. She's your daughter. That's your favourite photo of her. Now, you remember that day? We were all down the beach and she was in the water. She came running up the beach. She was all wet and she was calling to you, Daddy, Daddy. And you picked her up and you threw her in the air. And then I took that photo as you were drying her off. You remember that, don't you? Look at her. Look at her. There's just that yeah. deadness. Of, Who is she? Yes, yeah. That's yeah, horrible. and so is it's she, another slap, is she, is she yours? Yeah, yeah. But as a journey throughout, does that start to feel like a journey that... Yes, yes, yes. And I think there must be a letting go as well. I think that mm. is. She's lovely. No. I have to go. You hang on to it. You keep looking at it, all right? Don't worry about it. Now, I'll just be by there, OK? Now, perhaps we can have a little chat afterwards, all right? I'll just be by here, love. Not far. There's just three weeks to go. And what with the posters, graffiti, meetings, rehearsals, and visits to schools, old people's homes, charities, and even prisons, everyone in Port Talbot is talking about the passion. Hello, how are you doing? You're gonna, you're gonna dance for us then? Yeah. Yeah? You all ready? Yeah. Okay, good, good. How many of you are there? How many hundred? Lords. 
Have you all brought Chris? Well, it's a lovely day for it, isn't it? Smile for the camera. Look at that. <laughs> Tell the camera how much you love being in the fashion. Yeah. All right, great. Well, get yourselves ready. We'll, we'll get you going and then you can go. Try to organise uh, the entrance of about 100 under 10 year olds is quite something. <laughs> it's not something I've done before. I don't think you can do a course in it. I don't think I'll be doing it again, but it's good fun. Big bounces. Strong shape. Still. Quite high up, that, isn't it? Wow. 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 Has anyone been up on it yet? No. The original passion story took place in a country under the thumb of the Roman Empire. Michael has updated that theme of occupation into modern-day Port Talbot. We're running two, two choruses at the moment, the resistance group and the security slash riot police. The riot police obviously being the most aggressive and part of the company man's militia and the resistance being the protest group who are protesting against ICU. ICU are our fictional Roman Empire. They are the um, kind of big industrialist corporate um, company that are <laughs> threatening a hostile takeover of Patolbet, um, or t threatening a corporate takeover of Patolbet. So you are still kicking see off now. We see you. I see you. We see you. I see you. We see you. I see you. But eventually, some men are going to come for you. When they do. All I want you to do is put your hands up, just doing that, and then he is the one who's going down onto the ground. Okay. <laughs> This sound amazing. It's the Welsh Sea. We'll have to have a shout. <laughs> bully, bully. Mr. Bloody Nobody. We were amazed that a few people came forward who've been really politically active in the past. Some people might have been involved in the miners' strike, some people might have been involved in protesting against industrial groups in Port Talbot in the past. Soon is about normal human beings who feel like they have to do something to protect their town. The weekends are a chance to rehearse the big community scenes. Although there's a huge amount of work still to do, what the company have on their side is the fine line between the play and reality. The whole point is that we're telling a story about, about our town now. I'm not 
not trying to tell a, a you know a story about something else. Uh, we've tried to find a structure and a story that allows everyone to be themselves. How do we get picked? I think they asked who kind of stands up for themselves in the past, who has done, so am I right, yeah, who has yeah. done certain things and taken things further. I've taken on um, lots of different people. I don't know, really know if I can say, but university is airlines, um, kitchen manufacturers, <laughs> and anybody who's rude, really. Yeah? <laughs> It's fantastic to see you all here. Thank you so much for coming down on Mother's Day. Uh, but on a beautiful day at Abram Beach. This is our first chance really to put a large group of people, lots of different groups together. This episode of the story, which is the sort of first official episode of the story uh, that happens down here on Friday afternoon, involves lots of different groups. Obviously you can see them there. We've got choir, band, gymnasts, we have a pageant, we have a violin group, we have the circus group, we have our all different people here today. It's our first chance to get all these groups together, which is very exciting, but a little bit complicated as well. So please bear with us and please be patient, um, because it's our first chance to see how this might fit together and where people might be uh, and, and how this might work. Because the one group that aren't here yet are the audience, and we don't really know how many of those there may be. There may be thousands, there may be my mum and dad and a dog. Um, <laughs> I'm playing the role of the mayor. <laughs> I have my have my instructions. I have rehearsed part of this scene earlier in the week, um, and um, it's just a matter now of joining bits up. Well, we are the dignitaries of Port Talbot, and uh, we put this pageant on on the beach. So we're very proud to show people, and we're supporting the mayor. What's happening here today, man? You know? No. No, I just know we were supposed to be here at 10 with our massive cable drums and um, I guess we're going to look at how we're going to slot the routines that we've worked out into what the core cast have developed with um, the pageant. We need, we're down there, are we? Nobody told us, did they? Three days off. You'll have to tell me because I've only just joined Flyers this morning, this group. Oh, have you? Yeah, Bill told me to come to this one this morning, oh, right. so Hello. don't lose me. <laughs> No, no, no. We uh, apparently, we're here to be resistance, but it's the first time we've seen this big group, uh, all the rest of the group. Um, <coughs> usually, we've been working as little small groups. So it's when you stand there and you look at all these groups and people waiting around, you think they're all waiting for us to say what's happening here. And you just sort of think, please, someone come along and knows what they're doing and just take over. And then you realize, oh, it's us, that's, that's our job. Hello, are you all right? Anthony Pugh is a roofer in Port Albert, and this man who spends his days looking down on the world from on high has become the inspiration for the character of God. David Davis, who is playing the part of God, has come to meet his role model. And that she was. Oh, so to play the character of this person who lives Anthony's skills go far beyond roofing. There comes the buckets. Standing here, Anthony, it's amazing that you feel like you're a roofer looking down at the tower. Right. Yeah. Is this what you've done? Yeah, is have you recreated the, the, the world? This is it. I, this is my view. God, listen. <laughs> I don't know. You are the inspiration. <laughs> Good God. But this is this is what you are. You are now become me or become God, whichever yeah. way you look at it. You are now a big bird. This is what birds see, what people see. You go up in a plane, you don't see this. You've gone to eye. Yeah. Right? You can now just over and over, and you'll see what I see. I'm up there. Perhaps I'm working on the round chapel and looking over to Tallgate. I'm looking across the roofs. 
looking in the garden. I'm not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> looking, but I see, I don't look. I'm looking at the chimney pots. I'm looking at, mm. and it's a it's a fantastic feeling. <laughs> so, so tell me, how many roofers do you know who don't like heights? Uh, <laughs> do don't like heights? Yeah. Not very much, but we'll have to see how it goes. <laughs> uh, I got a good blindfold, mine. You know, not a great head for heights, but I haven't told anybody because obviously I didn't want to be. Uh, 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 turfed off the project, so to speak. Well, it holds fears for me in so much as that it is the climax of our production and we haven't been able to do a tech of it or a dress rehearsal of it. Um, and it's, you know, not only is it a very complicated sequence anyway, um, which we, you know, we've rehearsed aspects of it, but we've never been able to put everything together with music and sound and light and action. The front of my foot, where, see where it's red? Yeah, there? It's red below, yeah. That's because that's what I'm putting my I weight on. It gets in the way. Yeah, I can see that. Well, there's nothing... It's just slipping it. through. There's nothing yeah. to right. get onto. Because my heel can't go onto it. My right. foot doesn't let my heel get on there. My foot doesn't bend that way. Right. Potentially looking at a an, an night time, which will be cold no matter how hot it's been in the day. It'll still be cold because we're down by the sea. Wind coming off the beach, blowing co cold water onto my <laughs> naked body for about 15 minutes. And I remember the other day Bill saying, you know, the danger is hypothermia, that's, that's what we have to be careful about. I was like, yeah, might we have to be careful about it. Um, the idea that I might get hypothermia up there um, is quite scary. Okay. The fact that I'm, you know, I'm incredibly vulnerable up there, I'm, I can't move. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm strapped in there. I'm, I may not be actually nailed, but I'm strapped in. I'm not going anywhere. Um, and anyone who wants to take a, you know, do anything to me, they sort of can. So there's just a natural, you know, fear about that. But um, I think the adrenaline of, you know, doing the whole thing. And it's, it's very uncomfortable as well. When the project was announced, a telling of the crucifixion story, but without Jesus, without an orthodox resurrection, without any overt religious dimension, some of the churches in Port Talbot were concerned. Nigel Carhill is the vicar of St Mary's near the town centre. We were very concerned at the beginning of the project that they should have an element of resurrection. And uh, we were especially concerned because it was happening on Easter Day. And I had discussions with um, one of the executive producers and she told me the story and listened to our concerns and fears. Uh, Michael came, he told me the story, he told me about what they plan as the resurrection scene. And in Michael's mind, he says that he is very clearly portraying the story of Jesus of Nazareth, but not in a traditional fashion, and in a manner that opens the whole thing up to people of any faith and no faith. And I see nothing wrong in that. Nigel Carhill is now so enthusiastic about the play that on the Sunday before it starts, he's arranged a special church service in its honour. As Easter week begins, a hectic round of final rehearsals are underway all over the town, including one in St Mary's churchyard. Who is it? Calling out, yoo time to eat! I think they look blinking gorgeous, dressing gowns are all the rage this Easter. The biggest surprise for everyone is the weather. This chorus of ghosts are all looking just a little red in the face, thanks to the soaring temperatures. I 
I think everybody's feeling the same, extremely hot. We've got a few layers on, and especially we can't really wear silky dressing gowns. It's more of the old-fashioned kind of one. <laughs> when I was this lost was to them, time. I felt I hollow like inside. I Sometimes I still feel the sun the on my face, like good silk against my and skin. That we officially now have over a thousand people performing, and probably close to another thousand people that have done something else in the show, and that is absolutely incredible. My family is going to be with me, you know, and in the graveyards that are along here, my family are buried. So there's that for me. And then it's the people I've met, and we really have all bonded, old and new. We've come into lovely little groups, you know. I mean, I don't think any of us have got an idea of what it's going to be like in totality. So while it's going to be absolutely terrifying, you know, every minute you're just going to be waiting for something to kind of to go wrong and to have to, to sort something out. But at the same time, I think we just can't wait to see it. For Michael, getting as many people as possible from the town to perform has always been the point of the passion. However, for someone more used to the military-style organisation of feature films, these last run-throughs are proving a nerve-wracking experience. I go from being in the depths of despair to being sort of reasonably happy. That's, uh, that's about as good as it gets. And um, the fact that the sun is shining makes a big difference. I tend to wake up in the morning and for a moment I feel sort of like, ah. Oh. And then suddenly this hand grabs my innards and I go, ah. Oh. The actors are still getting the odd chain. We're at the stage of tweaking now. But you know, it's been organic from the start. I think it's going to continue to be so. OK, so three days and counting till launch date of The Passion. Um, we're all very excited. Um, a little bit stressed as well, because obviously trying to organise people in different places and also all the safety stuff. The tone is tremendous. It's talking about it everywhere you go now. There's so much to do, you just want to get it right. Uh, and we're still not quite sure where we fit into everything. At the Suina Moor Old People's Home on the seafront, Michael has raced into a last-minute rehearsal of a dreamlike dance that will take place at dawn on the first day of the Passion. It's a sequence that he's never even had a chance to look at before. Unfortunately, there are not quite as many performers as anticipated. There are more people, are there? Hopefully, yes. I couldn't get hold of them up in the end. Right. I suppose switched on. We the answer of you was trying all the people to get hold of people. Certain things aren't there and aren't in place, or this group can't turn up, or this group can't be there until the day. You just have to make kind of decisions go, OK, it's not happening. We have to just try and make this work now. Because this may be the last chance we get to actually see it, so I'd just love to know that we've built oh, yeah. in something just in case there isn't anyone else. I'm thinking that we might need to have something that moves a little bit more. Just yeah. want to be able to plot in today what happens from the moment they go through the yeah. gate. Really, and then cool, let's do it. Head, let's yeah. go. Yeah. Anyone who's happy to get up on the platform, great. That's good. And anyone else just stays in this area here. And, uh, and we all go through the sequence yes. once here because then down on the beach at that point, yeah. much further along, we'll in the water, and the tide will be out at this yeah. point, will be um, Nigel, who plays uh, the stranger. Uh, he'll be standing in the water with his staff. Are we still doing our, our movements then? While well, once you've done the one sequence, then you stop and just watch. That's plan, plan A, is that. Plan B, it's freezing cold and raining. As soon as you arrive here, and you do the sequence, and he sees you, you go back All right. in the warm and, and dry. Cold. And just remember, no matter how cold or wet it is, I'll be in the sea. Oh. Yeah. With only 24 hours to go in the car park of the Seaside Social Club, Port Albert's answer to the Garden of Gethsemane, there are still an awful lot of technical issues to resolve. For David Davis, the actor playing the godlike figure of the teacher's father, the moment has finally arrived for him to ascend into the heavens. That is, 
as long as he can keep his vertigo under control. Well, luckily for me, I've got a wonderful person, Howie, and he is a circus performer, and he has made it very safe for me. Once you're up there, it's not too bad. I had to do it because last night when I did it for the first time, there must have been a hundred people here. So that's a situation you can't back out of, is it, you know? So it goes, what are you? I don't know the man. And then are you ready, sir? Is that what was going wrong before? Okay. Who are you? Well, you are with him, weren't you? Saints, you are the king of this town. Answer me. I don't what are you? I don't what are you? I don't know the man. Right, well, what are you? I don't know the man. Okay, let's go from what are you? What are you? I don't know the man. When it works, it'll work fantastically. We're just, we're just half a turn off it at, at the moment, I think. Um, it would be nice to have a few more, a few more days. I am! Ooh, ooh, ooh. Take it! Okay, let's move. Give me a duck I think the process that we've been on as a group has gone from sharing that preconception that most people have, which is what the heck are we going to find here? What happens here? What are we going to work with? Who are the people that we're going to work with? You know, what is there to do in Port Albert? And actually, coming out this side, the pride is just immense. I feel like I'm the mother of 2,000 people. <laughs> and I think that's what I'm going to feel on the weekend. Maybe. I don't know. It's important to be ready, Chad. Remember that. Thanks, Dad. Are you the one they call the teacher? Answer. If you say so. Come with me, sir. Get off him! He knew he had to kill him! The final rehearsal is over and Michael and Bill have one last chance to rally their cast. There are going to be mistakes, yep. you know? We only get one go at this whole thing. And there's going to be so many variables on the days. You know, we, with the audience there, we don't know where they're going to be a lot of the time, we don't know how they're going to react to things. But, uh, but the one thing that really works, given all those variables, you know, don't worry about making mistakes. Don't worry about it not being as slick as it should be. Just do it with commitment and confidence. Yep and enjoy it and really inhabit it. You know, this is a, almost like a completely new form of theater that we've invented for this show. Um, and, you know, and you are pioneers. This is the first time an entire town has been mobilized in the telling of a story sort of about itself. Um, and so just do it with confidence. Tomorrow is Good Friday. And for the next 72 hours, these ordinary streets will become a stage for a unique event. This is where a betrayal will occur. This is where a trial will take place. And this is where a man called the teacher will be put to death on a cross.